Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Today I am back doing another set guide and review, and this time it is for the high end premium all hit set Panini Immaculate. We're going to go over all sorts of things today what the key autos are, what are the biggest chase cards, what are the best teams to buy and breaks. Plus, is this set actually a better value? than Topps Chrome, which releases on the same day. Well, we're about to find out in this 2022 Panini Immaculate Set Guide and Review. Interestingly, we have not had a ton of Panini products drop for baseball in 2022. But tomorrow, we have 2022 Panini Immaculate. And in the set guide and review, what we're trying to do is figure out how good Panini Immaculate really is. We do that by using the exclusive one cent sensational set rating, which is the most in-depth rating you're going to find anywhere on the internet. Now, there's a bunch we're going to cover off on today. We're going to start with the set highlights, kind of give you what the set's about, who it's for, tell you what the different buying formats that you can buy this set in, we'll dig a little bit deeper, tell you who the key cards that we're going to be chasing are, cover off on all the parallels, the relics, the autos. And then I'm even going to give you six teams that I might recommend for you to target in breaks. And I also am going to give you a break cheat sheet which tells you how good all 30 teams are in the break. So you know exactly who to buy into in this super popular break product. And that's what brings us to the one cent sensational set rating where we find out how good Panini Immaculate really is. We'll wrap everything up by telling you how it ranks with all of the other baseball card sets that have come out this season. But I got one more thing before we begin. Throw over to first and hit that like button. It is the best way that you can support the channel. And if you like these set guides and reviews, be sure to subscribe so you can see all of them. If you want to see them first, hit the bell notification so you know as soon as they go live. And if you haven't done so already, check out my Patreon page. That's how you get into my breaks. That is how you get free monthly packs. That is how you get... PSA cards graded at no additional cost and so much more. There's a link in the video description below, so be sure to check that out. So let's begin. 2022 Panini Immaculate. It's an elegant set. It's got a ton of high-end memorabilia and a ton of different autos. In fact, it's all hits. There is nothing else. It's in its ninth year of production, started back in 2014 and runs through this year. It is one of Panini's most popular baseball sets of the year, and it is only available in hobby stores. Like I said, it's a hits-only release, but it does have a 100-card base set that features vets and retired players, plus 62 cards are rookie patch autos, and those are obviously going to be nothing but rookies. Throughout the whole set, you are going to find prospects, rookies, vets, and retired greats throughout the checklist. In each box, you are guaranteed to get four autographs and two memorabilia cards. Rookie patch autos, prospect patch autos are all gonna be on-card signatures, which is a major plus. Memorabilia swatches, they include all sorts of different things. So it's not just jerseys. We've got bats, fielding gloves, cleats, jackets, socks, you name it, they've got all sorts of different memorabilia throughout this set. The Hall of Fame material set features player relics from Hall of Fame players, and you got to know one thing going into this. It is a high-risk, high-reward release. One other thing, because it is a Panini product, it does not have MLB logos. It is an MLB Players Association release, so that means that MLB doesn't sponsor it, so they cannot use the logos, which holds true for all Panini products. That is a turnoff for some people immediately. For other people, it is not that big of a deal. Finally, it's a super popular break product because it's all hits. Breakers like doing it. You feel like every time you get into one of these breaks, you've got a big chance at a nice, expensive card, a nice banger. And so for that, it makes it a great break product. 
So for the different buying formats, well, like I said, it's only available in hobby and you can get a hobby case, which is going to give you eight boxes per case, one pack per box, six cards per pack for 48 total cards. Cost on that $3,150 online right now. And the cost per card is pretty high, $65.63. But you are guaranteed to get 32 autos and 16 relics. Then we've got the hobby box. That's one pack per box, six cards per pack. So six total cards going for about 400 bucks online right now. Cost per card comes up to $66.67 and you get four autos and two relics. Now you can also get a first off the line hobby box. You could have got those on the Panini website last week in their Dutch auction. What you get in that is one pack per box, six cards per pack, so six total cards. They're going online right now for about 600 bucks. So that gives you a $100 cost per card. But in those boxes, you do get a first off the line exclusive pink or hollow gold auto. Those are each numbered to 10 or to two. You're also going to get three more autos and two relics. So what are the key cards we're going to be chasing in 2022 Panini Immaculate? Well, we'll start with the rookies. We've obviously got Wander Franco. You can see what that looks like over there on the right. We've got Cal Raleigh, Vidal Brujan, Jaron Duran, Brandon Marsh, Reed Detmers, Joe Ryan, Seth Beer, Shane Baz, Lars Newtbar. We've got Jake McCarthy, O'Neill Cruz, and Juan Yepes. Now, to be clear, there are more rookies that are available in other different parts of the set is like patch autos and different ones. They're just not part of this base rookie set. For our parallels, autos and relics. Obviously the parallel rookie patch autos that are over on the left over here, if you can get a parallel low number of those, those are gonna be highly sought after. We have the clearly immaculate material signatures. Now that subset, features prospects. So some of the biggest prospect names that you've gotten to know in 2022, many of them are featured in that set. There's the Immaculate Material Autos. There's the Immaculate Material Signatures. That's one of the relic sets that has hats, cleats, batting gloves, all sorts of different things. Then you also have Immaculate Signatures. There's the Jumbo Bat Signatures, obviously going to have a bat relic in there. you got Jumbo Socks. There's other things like jerseys and whatnot. We've got the prospect patch autos. Now those, again, prospects that have patch autos. There's the rookie triple memorabilia signatures, which is a very nice subset for autos. And there's also laundry tag relics and immaculate prime relics. Finally, we have the remarkable rookies jerseys, which is another rookie set that is a memorabilia patch card. So for our base parallels, again, this is only for the base set. For the base set, cards number one through 100, we've got red numbered to 49 or less. We've got blue numbered to 25 or less, gold numbered to 10 or less, and that's only found in the first off the line. We've got the pink numbered to 10 or less, also available in first off the line. We've got green numbered to five or less. And finally, a platinum one of one, and all the printing plates, which are going to be one of ones as well. For the rookie patch auto base set, we expand a little bit in the parallel rainbow. We've got the jersey number numbered to 94 or less. We've got the red numbered to 49, hollow silver to 25, black numbered to 10, pink numbered to 8, which is the first off the line. We've got the button numbered to 8 or less, the green numbered to 5, hollow gold to 2, the platinum one of one the brand logo one of one, and finally we have printing plate one of ones. So now let's cover off on the relics and there's quite a few of them. So we'll try and get through this pretty quickly. We've got the hall of fame materials, 10 cards in the set, each numbered to 99 or less. You can see what the parallel breakdown is for that subset on screen. We've got the hall of fame jumbo materials. That's got 14 cards in the set, each number to 25 or less. We also have the Immaculate Black Prime Relics. 62 cards in the set with varied numbering. And this is one of those ones that's got the gloves, the batting gloves, the hat eyelets, jacket brand logos, all sorts of different things. One thing to note, 
not all of the players have one of these parallels. So they might have some of them, but they might not have all of them. Kind of ho hard to source some of these relics sometime. We also have the Immaculate Clear Prime Relic, 62 cards in that subset as well with varied numbering with the same parallel breakdown basically that the Immaculate Black has. We have more relics. We have the Immaculate Materials Duel. So obviously that's gonna be a dual relic, 19 cards in the set, each numbered to 99 or less. And as you can see, we've got the buttons, the cleats and whatnot in the parallel breakdown. We have the Immaculate Materials Trios. That's got 17 cards, each numbered to 99 or less. Again, we got more socks and whatnot, all sorts of different stuff in the parallel breakdown. Then we have the Jumbo Relics. That's what you see over on the right with the O'Neill Cruise card. 62 cards in the set, each numbered to 10 or less. And you can see that we've got batting gloves with logos and straps, cleat logos, fielding gloves, hats, jackets, all sorts of fun stuff in those relics. And we have even more relics. We've got the Jumbo Fielding Gloves, 14 cards in that set, number to 25. The Laundry Tags, that's got 69 different cards in there, each number to eight or less. We've got the Legends. I don't think that's supposed to say Legenda. It's supposed to say Legends. Legends Materials, 30 cards, varied numbering. And we've got a more standard parallel rainbow that you can see on screen. We've got the Legends Dual Materials, 20 cards in that set with varied numbering, again, with the same parallel breakdown. And then there's massive materials, 24 cards in the set. They got varied numbering. Some of them can be pretty low numbered. And finally, we have the materials relics. That's got 28 cards in the set, numbered to 25 or less. Again, with a massive array of different relics that you can get in the versions for materials relics. We've got the Quad Legends Memorabilia, only got five cards and are numbered to 25 or less. We also have the Remarkable Rookie Jerseys. That's got 40 cards in the set, each numbered to 99, with a red, blue, gold, green, platinum, one of one, and printing plate parallel rainbow. Finally, we have the Rookie Reserves. That's the card that you see with Edward Cabrera on the right. 25 cards in that set, and they're each numbered to 20. Five. Now for our autographs. We'll start with the clearly immaculate signatures, 50 cards in the set, varied numbering again with a red, blue, gold, green, and platinum parallel rainbow. We also have the immaculate marks. That's got 30 cards in the set, each number to 99 or less with the parallel breakdown that you see on screen. And you've got the immaculate signatures, 99 cards in the set, Probably going to see a lot of these coming out of boxes. You've got varied numbering on them and, of course, a nice parallel rainbow. And the shadow box signatures. That's got 30 cards in it. They're each numbered to 99 or less. Some of these may have sticker autos on them, which is kind of a bummer for a shadow box. But nonetheless, you've got the parallel breakdown that you see on screen. Then we get to our autographed relics, and there's quite a few of these as well. We've got the Clearly Immaculate Materials Signatures, 49 cards in the set, each numbered to 99 or less. There's also the Immaculate Materials Autographs, 20 cards in the set, each numbered to 99. And this is where we start getting into jersey numbers, hollow silver, some very cool relics with autos that you're going to see coming out of that set. There's also the Immaculate Material Signatures, 37 cards in the set, each numbered to 99. Probably see a few of these coming out of boxes. We've got fielding gloves, cleats, all that sort of stuff, again, in the parallel breakdown. For more relics, we've got the Jumbo Bat Signatures. These are going to be Jumbo Bat Relics, 20 cards in the set, all sorts of different varied numbering, but you can see we've got a red, blue, gold, green, platinum printing plate breakdown. All of these can be numbered as high as 99, but some of them are numbered to 25, even in their base version. We've got the Jumbo Fielding Glove Signatures, 18 cards in the set, numbered 25 or less. And you got a gold, green, and platinum parallel rainbow. You got Jumbo Jacket Signatures, 18 cards in the set, numbered to 99 or less. And you can see the parallel breakdown on screen. We've got the Jumbo Socks Signatures. I wonder if they smell. I always wonder that. I can't get past it. There's 20 cards in the subset, varied numbering. And we've got a parallel rainbow on that one as well. 
For more autograph relics, we have the premium patch autographs, 20 cards in the set, numbered to 25 with a nice tight low numbered parallel rainbow. We also have the prospect patch autographs. That's what you see over on the right with the Riley Green. 17 cards in the set, varied numbering, all going to be 99 or less though. And then you've got your parallels. So you've got your jersey numbers, you've got buttons, you've got greens numbered to five or three, a very cool parallel breakdown for that subset as well. You've also got the rookie triple memorabilia signatures, 30 cards in the set, each numbered to 99 with a red, hollow, silver, black, green, and platinum parallel rainbow. So with all that, obviously a ton of different autos, ton of different auto relics, RPAs, tons of different memorabilia. What teams are good embrace? When you look at the team lists, they are huge. So it's kind of a tough one to break down, but I did all the research and I'm going to give you six teams that I think would be worth targeting embrace. Let's start with the best team. It's the Seattle Mariners. They only have one base card and two base rookies. And no, Julio Rodriguez is not one of the RPAs. He is not in the rookie RPA base set checklist. However, they've got 33 relics and 29 autos. J-Rod is in the set as an auto, as well as Noel V. Marte. They are prospect autos. Griffey, which apparently I can't spell his name. I'm sorry, I left out the E. He's in the set. You've got Jared Kelnick. You've got Cal Raleigh, Logan Gilbert, who has been a fantastic pitcher. They're both rookies. They've got autos in this set. Because J-Rod's in here, Noel V. Marte, which is a highly touted prospect in his own right, you've got a lot of stuff that you can get out of here. They've also got a ton of autos. They've got a ton of content overall. And I think as you're buying into case breaks of this on a pick your team, you're going to find that the Mariners are pretty expensive, maybe the most expensive team or right near it. However, it's probably going to give you one of the best returns on your investment. So if you got the money, want to buy into a case break, the Mariners are going to be a great way to go. Random team break. Keep the team. You got lucky. That's fantastic. One team that you're going to want to watch for break in and break out. If you're looking for the most autos, well, technically that's the Seattle Mariners. But since we already covered off on them, we're going to cover off on the Boston Red Sox who are tied with the Royals for the second most autos in the set. But I picked the Boston Red Sox because they've got six base cards, three base rookie cards, 33 relics, and 27 autos. A case could be made that the Boston Red Sox are the best team in this set. You've got a Jaron Duran rookie, a Connor Siebold rookie, Dustin Pedroia's in there, Carl Yastrzemski's in there, so a nice Hall of Fame auto, Raphael Devers, Chris Sales in there. You got Marcelo Mayer and Tristan Casas as prospect autos in the set. A ton of different great autos that you can get out of here. The Boston Red Sox very well may be the best team in this. I just think the Mariners are going to go off as the top team in the set. But if you can get the Red Sox on a deal on a case break, it's going to return some pretty good value. If you get them in a random team break, keep them. Even try and trade for him because the Red Sox have been a good team all year in other sets, but not absolutely fantastic. But in this set, they are dialed in, locked in. I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend on the Boston Red Sox. If you're looking for the most rookie cards, another great team. We've got the Tampa Bay Rays. They've got four base cards, not 41. They've also got four base rookie cards, 39 different relics, only 17 autos. But most of them are going to be rookie autos. Obviously, Wander Franco, Shane Baz, Vidal Brujan. You got Josh Lowe in there. So those four rookies that we've seen basically all season, they're in here as well. Wander's going to drive up the price on this, obviously. You've also got a Curtis Mead prospect auto that you can pull out of here. So I don't think that they're going to be the most expensive team, maybe probably in the top three. I think these three teams are probably the top three teams that you're going to find in Immaculate. However, you're paying up for Wander, 
So you're going to pay that premium price. That's up to you if you want to do that and to pick your team break. Maybe some better teams you could get and save a little bit money and see if you can find a little bit more value. But if you're chasing Wander, it's a great set. He's got a few different autos that you can find in here, a ton of different relics you can find in here. So the Tampa Bay Rays, going to be an expensive team. Keep them if you get them in a random team break. If you're looking for a solid choice, go look at the Kansas City Royals. They've got two base cards, three base rookie cards, a ton of relics with 37, and a ton of autos with 27. Like I said, they were tied for the Boston Red Sox with the second most autos in the set. Bobby Witt Jr. is in the set, but it is not a rookie auto. It is a prospect auto. I believe he actually has two different ones. But you can also get George Brett. You've got a nice rookie in MJ Melendez. You've got Whit Merrifield, Salvador Perez autos. Kansas City Royals, because it's a prospect, Bobby Witt, and people seem to be down on Bobby Witt for whatever reason, they might fall out of the top five. Doubtful, still going to be an expensive team, but if you can find them for the right price and pick your team, I believe that they're going to return pretty good value because they have a ton of content in here. And if you get lucky and hit that Bobby Witt, that's awesome. In a random team break, again, another team. Just keep them. You're probably not going to be able to trade for them if you don't get them. So hopefully you get lucky in a random team break. Now, for a couple of sleepers, a big surprise here. The Texas Rangers, which all season in 2022 baseball card collecting, have been one of the worst teams almost every set. But in this set, they've got one base card, three base rookie cards, 38 relics, and a healthy 24 autos. Who are we looking for? Prospects. Josh Jung, who just got called up. Spencer Howard. Dustin Harris. All big names. You've also got Otto. You've got Adolis Garcia, AJ Alexi Autos as another rookie in here. So there's tons of different rookies. There's tons of different prospects. The Texas Rangers, you're probably going to find that they creep into the top 10 most expensive teams because of some of these names, but probably one of the best value picks in a pick your team break. The Rangers are right up there with some of the best teams in the set in regards to overall content. And they've got some really nice names in here. So if you get them in a random team break, keep them. But if you don't get them, this is a team that you could probably make a trade for, even if you have someone that seems like it's a better team. Like, for example, the Chicago White Sox, which are a great team in this as well. But I would trade the White Sox for the Rangers all day. So if you get a random team break and they allow trades... Make a trade for the Texas Rangers. Go out on a limb. See if you can hit one of these prospect autos. It would be awesome if you did. And to pick your team break, watch the prices on the Rangers because not everyone's going to bid on them. And you might be able to find them lower on an auction than you might think. And they're going to return a decent value based upon the amount of content they have in here. My other sleeper, I don't know if it's really a sleeper because of the team name, but it is the St. Louis Cardinals. They've got six base cards, two base rookies, 33 relics, and 19 autos. Who are we looking for? Lars Newtbar, Juan Yepes. We've got Paul Goldschmidt, Mark McGuire. We've got Molina, Dylan Carlson. We've even got a Tim McCarver auto in there. Plus, you've got Nolan Gorman as a prospect auto. Just a absolutely loaded auto checklist for the St. Louis Cardinals. Probably going to be a middle-of-the-road team. We've got a couple different rookies. Lars Newbar kind of making some noise lately. Yep, is has made noise throughout the season. And it's the St. Louis Cardinals, so there's a little bit of pizzazz that goes along with that. Again, another team you might be able to trade for in a random team break. And a pick-your-team break, watch pricing. If you see that it's bidding a little bit lower than some of the trends, get in on the Cardinals. Going to be a great team to get in a case break. So those are my six teams. Are there some teams I'm missing? Are there some teams that you would take off of here? Let me know in the comments below. I love responding to comments. And if you haven't done so already, throw over to first, hit that like button for me. And now we're going to get into the break cheat sheet. How good are all 30 teams? Well, I break it down into three different tiers. The top tier, which are teams that I think total green light. If you're getting into breaks, they're going to be good teams. Just watch your pricing on them. And then I give you a second tier, which are teams that may or may not hit, but they hold some decent value. Then the bottom tier, which are teams that I would recommend to stay away from. So let's start with the top tier. We've got 
the Tampa Bay Rays, which we covered off on, the Mariners, but there's a couple teams on here that we didn't talk about. One's the Baltimore Orioles. They're a very nice team. Not a ton of content, but they do have 15 relics and 19 autos. Some of the autos you're looking for, Gunnar Henderson, Adley Rutschman, Eddie Mur- Murray, Colton Kowser's in there. A very nice team. You'll probably see them in the upper half most expensive because you do have Adley autos in there. But if you see them going low, don't be afraid to get into the Orioles. You've also got the Cincinnati Reds, which I almost made my sleeper team. You've got an Ellie De La Cruz auto in there. Nick Lodolo, he's in there. Hunter Green's in there. Joey Votto, they've got 19 different autos in the set and an amazing 40 different relics. They've got a ton of relics. So the Cincinnati Reds, another great team. For my second tier, you can see we've got quite a few teams in here. Let's see some of them. The Pittsburgh Pirates, maybe one you want to look at. I don't think the Pirates are going to be that expensive. You're basically chasing O'Neill Cruz. They've only got nine autos and 29 relics, but it is a true O'Neill Cruz rookie card. So there's something to be said for that. Ruancy Contreras is in there. He's had a pretty decent second half of the season. He's, he's a pitcher, but definitely one that you're going to want to look at there. So the Pittsburgh Pirates, not a bad team. Definitely a second tier team. And then another one that we have, the Toronto Blue Jays. Doesn't seem like they would have a lot, but surprisingly, they've got 19 autos and 15 relics. You're chasing Otto Lopez as a rookie, uh, but you've also got Alec Manoa in there. You've got Jordan Groshans, Gunnar Hogland. So again, getting back to that prospect auto checklist, that's where I really think Panini Immaculate shines this year. We've got some very good prospect autos. So the Blue Jays, a very nice team. And you can kind of see some of the other teams that round out. The Atlanta Braves, a very good team. Surprisingly, we finally get the Rockies out of the bottom tier. So they're up in the second tier year. Finally, for my bottom tier, I've got seven different teams, which is about average for a set. Some teams are surprising in here. For example, I've got the Philadelphia Phillies in here, which have been kind of a good team in 2022 for a lot of releases. But the Phillies, they do have 12 autos and they do have 30 relics. So they've got enough content, but really there's no like Bryce Harper. There's not a lot of the big names that are on the team. A couple rookies, you know, Matt Veerling and Luke Williams are in there. So if you like those guys, you can probably get them cheap in this. But overall, just kind of a weak auto checklist. And being that it's so auto-driven with Panini Immaculate, just one that I would probably stay away from. Then you've got the Oakland Athletics. Not a bad team because they do have 18 autos and 16 relics. So again, they've got the content. But really, the biggest names you're looking for, Shea Langoliers, a nice prospect there. Christian Pache, Nick Allen. But outside of that, they don't have a lot. There's no rookies with them. So even though they've got a lot of autos, I would recommend to stay away from them. The Twins move down into the third tier. They've been all over the board this year, but the Twins just do not have a ton of content in this. The Nationals, they've got 12 different autos, but not a lot to speak of there. And the rest of these teams just don't have the content to keep up with the teams that are in the tiers above. So let me know what teams you're buying into, what teams you're interested in. Would love to know in the comments below. So that's what brings us to our one cent sensational set rating. So let me explain what this is real quick. Basically, it's the most in-depth rating system you're going to find anywhere on the internet. What I do, I'm going to break Panini Immaculate down into 10 different categories, each category being worth one to 10 points. We add up all those points after we go through the categories and we give it its final sensational set rating score using the scale below. Then what we do is we compare how good 2022 Panini Immaculate is compared to the seasons prior for Panini Immaculate. And then we compare Panini Immaculate with all of the other sets that have come out so far in the 2022 card collecting season. So let's get right into it. For our 10 categories, we're going to start out with appeal. And for appeal, I give it a 6.5. I do think that if this was a Topps product with logos, that this would have a ton of appeal, especially for the price point. However, we are missing the logos, so therefore I have to take appeal down to a 6.5. With that being said, I think because you've got so many low numbered and rookie patch autos and some very cool 
memorabilia pieces that you can pull out of this set. I do think that it has a lot of appeal. Like I said earlier, it's one of Panini's most popular baseball products. For the base set checklist, I'm going to give it a five. We do have a lot of rookies in here, but there isn't a Spencer Torkelson. There isn't a J-Rod. There isn't a Hunter Green true rookie in the base set checklist. There are a lot of the rookies and they're all going to be numbered. You know, you've got Wander Franco, you've got Bruhan, O'Neill Cruz, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a five. I would have expected to see some of these mid-season and early season call-ups in this set. However, for the auto checklist, I'm going to move it up to a 7.5. There's some filler in this set. Don't get me wrong, but there's also some huge names in the set. And I think what really saves the autos is those prospect auto checklists. And the fact that we've got Bobby Witt, that we've got J-Rod and all of these bigger names that are in the auto checklist, plus a ton of different Hall of Famers as well. So I give it a 7.5. For the inserts, parallels, variations, relics, stuff like that. Well, there are no inserts, but there are some amazing parallels in here. And there are some amazing relics in here as well. They very relic driven set. It's very strong in that arena, does some stuff that you don't see in hardly any other sets. So I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8.5. For the production run and the pack odds, well, every card's basically numbered. So we know the production run is pretty low. Your pack odds going to be pretty good. You're going to get return out of these boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7.5. For the card quality, some of these cards can be absolutely beautiful. You hope that the quality control during printing is very good on these because there's nothing worse than getting six cards in a pack and you get one card that's screwed up in the printing process. Panini's kind of been known for that, but really, uh, overall, some of these cards are the most beautiful cards you can get in the card collecting season. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a perfect 10. For historical value, this is a little deceiving here. I'm going to give it a six. Some of these cards will not hold a ton of value simply because they do not have logos. The trick to Panini Immaculate and some of these premium products is when you get them graded, they can go for a whole lot. And if you get the big names and if they say rookie card or if it's a big prospect auto, something like that, and you've got it graded high, these can go for a lot of money. Panini Immaculate, a very premium brand, people do chase it. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a six. Then we've got cost value. How much return are we getting if we buy a box? Well, I'm bumping it up to a four because there will be some boxes where you do not get your $400 buy-in back. There will be some where you most definitely could, and there will be some where I think you could break even. All that being said, production run a little bit higher probably this year. So I'm going to go ahead and say not every box is going to be awesome. I think it's probably going to be better than some of the Topps products that have come out recently. So I'll go ahead and give it a four. For artistic value, it's a very elegant set. It does not change its design much and it's got a very elegant, nice looking design. So I'm going to go ahead and give it an eight. And then for collectability, well, I can't mark it too high because there is a Decent segment of collectors that will not collect Panini products because it does not have major league logos. And I totally understand that. I also think that it is a high risk, high reward product, which turns off budget collectors and it turns off some other people that are a little bit more risk averse. However, if you are into chasing autos and big hits, this is a very fun set to open. So we're going to balance all that out and go ahead and give it a five. So now what we're going to do, we're going to add up all of those scores. And for 2022, Panini Immaculate comes in on the sensational set rating as a 68. So it is a very good set. A lot to like here. You got to be kind of a big hit chaser or a premium numbered relic chaser, something like that. If you are that person, you will like this set a whole lot. You will not like this set if you are budget friendly, if you are risk averse, and if you like ripping packs, well, you're only going to rip one in this. So you got to be willing to buy the lottery ticket, so to speak, to like this product. 
But overall, we've got a ton of different rookies. We've got a ton of different prospect autos, a ton of different Hall of Fame autos, and a ton of cool looking relics. I actually believe that for the cost of a Panini Immaculate Box versus the cost of a Topps Chrome Box, that you actually may walk away more happy with the Immaculate Box than the Topps Chrome Box as you're opening these things over the next week, two weeks. So keep that in mind when you're choosing what to buy at your hobby shop. In 2021, Panini Immaculate came in at a 64.5. Didn't quite have the rookie oomph that this year does, but it's a very nice set from last year. Really not a ton has changed year over year. And in 2020, I actually did not do a sensational set rating set for Panini Immaculate. So... How does Panini Immaculate rate with all of the other sets that have come out so far in the 2022 season? Well, it comes in fourth out of 22 with a score of 68. We really are starting to see some of the best sets of the season bubble up to the top. Bowman, which came out months ago, still at the top with a 78. I do have Topps Chrome at a 75. And I know I just said you might have better luck or get more joy out of a Panini Immaculate box than a Topps Chrome box this year. But Topps Chrome, we've got big rookie autos, we've got the logos, and that set does tend to hold more value. That's why it ranked higher this year. You can actually go watch that review. I just released it a couple days ago and see why I give that set a 75. But really, Panini Immaculate, I think it's going to be a real fun one this year. Rounding out our top three, we've got Topps Museum Collection, another very nice set from Topps. And you can see we have one other Panini product in the top 10 with Panini Select down there at 10th. And then we see Topps Series 1 and kind of the sets that I think that most people would agree have kind of bubbled up to the top so far. So with that, guys, as you're out there in the wild, I hope you have great luck finding the packs that you want to open. And when you do open them, I hope you pull some fire. I want to thank everyone for watching this Panini Immaculate Review. And as always, be good to your family, be good to your friends, be good to your neighbors, and most importantly, take care of yourselves. Have a good day. Thanks for watching.